out of so I've done this for 10 years and it worked for 10 years but this one night is the night I'm going to realize oh, every other audience was wrong and you're right maybe I'm not funny right now but I don't think you're the one who's going to derail this I moved fucking 3,000 miles gave up my life toured the fuck Europe for 4 years and for some reason right now you think you're not funny fuck off well, maybe you should accept this isn't the easiest fucking gig in the world. I'm in a fucking corridor. Thank you guys in the back. I'm in a fucking corridor. The lights are on. Everyone's here at work parties. It's hard. I'm trying. You don't like it. You fuck off. I'm fucking trying, lady. Stop swearing. Stop swearing. It's comedy! If you wanted a clean comedy show, go to a clean comedy show. You don't get to dictate what happens. Alright, the show will continue now. With less energy than before. Here's my best joke, which you might not like. Uh, my friend Sarah, she calls herself a feminist, but she misappropriates the word. She was like, oh, you know, I would never convert to Islam. I was like, oh, that's crazy, I didn't ask. She was like, yeah, I'm like the opposite of a woman of burger. I was like, uh, no, you're not. I know what I mean, but you're not. Because if you were the opposite of a woman in a burger, you'd just be a naked man in a blindfold. I'm adopted. I've never met my mom. I don't know what she does for a living, and that makes it hard to enjoy a lap dance. I couldn't afford it, but I went on a 10-day vacation with my dad. It was 10 days, but no alone time at all. So by day three of the trip, I ended up having to try to wank off with my dad asleep in the hotel bed beside me. But that wasn't the worst part. The worst part was the whole time I was doing it, I had to stare at my dad to make sure he didn't wake up. Well, this has been a party. Um, thank you for uh, telling me I'm not funny. That was really nice and supportive of you. I hope when you're having a hard day at work, people are fucking assholes to you. And then you'll know how that felt. And when that happens, you'll think of me. And I can enjoy that. Most of you are great. Uh, hopefully, you'll, I think you'll really like the next comic. She's not me. And, uh, oh, some room for improvement. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go. You guys are uh, not very nice. And I hope that sticks with you. Thank you. Goodbye. How to be a gamer girl in four easy steps. One, choose a gender neutral or masculine username for your online identity. The hordes of cisgender, heterosexual, and mostly white men you'll be gaming with are incredibly sensitive to the possibility of a female within their midst and are more likely to consider you part of the scenery than a peer on the battlefield. If you started gaming when you were young, naive, and starry-eyed, and have the misfortune of an unchangeable feminine username like Jigglypuff Sparkle Fairy, <laughs> prepare your defenses ahead of time. At the first question of your gender, tell them you are a lesbian, because in gamer jargon, lesbian is synonymous with man, and there's no room to be feminine here. Two. Become an expert in everything. Complete every side quest, earn every achievement, be prepared for any reference or joke, because if you're not, Fake gamer girl alert! Suddenly, that low-cut shirt you're wearing was not a choice you made because you felt good about your bomb-ass cleavage when you woke up this morning. Suddenly, you're a succubus. You're only in it for the attention. Because what real gamer doesn't know that the skeleton hanging by its ankles from the ceiling of the Bjorn Ice Caves on the island of Solstheim in the Blood Moon expansion of the Elder Scrolls III Morrowind was obviously a Star Wars reference? <laughs> Fake geek girls. Three. Be willing to accept the fact that you, yes, you are single-handedly responsible for the degradation of the modern-day gaming industry because you keep demanding better representation for women, even though you already have a diverse selection of skinny, scantily clad, and or heavily sexualized white women to choose from. Uh, what's it called? Everyone remembers their parents what they used to do to them when they were little kids, right? When they were little kids, they used to be do, do bad things. Remember what your parents used to do, right? My mom would be like, I'm gonna get the fucking belt, right? And when we were kids, we were always rebels, right? We always said, and we always like, I always tried to mock my mother. I'm like, I'm gonna get the fucking belt, and right? And she'd go get it, and I'd fucking jolt right away. I'm jolting. And when you were a kid, you always thought that you can outrun your parents, 
Two, wasn't that the fact, too, but you quickly figured out that you could not outrun your parents. I saw him running faster than a black man with a stolen VCR, right? And she turns into a cowboy, and her belt is her whip. She's right away. This is where you give up. This is where you give up. So you start saying, I'm not going to put the dog in the dryer again, I promise. She's dragging me off like chainsaw with my legs in the back. Oh, man, everyone knows what their parents do. Come on, dickheads. Uh, Get him! <laughs> what are you saying? Hey, gay! No, seriously. Um, so you can't understand gay people? No, I don't. I don't. I seriously don't. Because what, what makes you, like, let's say for a gay guy, what makes you say, oh, I just want to suck a cop? Seriously, what makes you get old? Huh? Oh my God. I like to suck cock. What? I like to suck cock. I just like having us again. Signify that you're gay. You're not. I don't know. You just said, how do you like to suck cock? I'm saying if you're a guy, you have to pay attention to dumb fucking blonde. That's it. Blonde dumbass. And thank you for reminding me. I met a girl one time, and I asked her what her name was, and she said Dolphin. Okay. She said Dolphin. <laughs> Wait, you said I met a girl? Look at my fucking five cent. You think I can't meet a girl? Oh my god. Anyway, uh, before I snap and start drawing stools all over the place, I'm gonna leave. Thanks. It sounds nice. the radio, I mimed walking into a thing. <laughs> um, hello. When I chose my topic, I was under extreme stress. So I am here to talk about why shoes are overrated. <laughs> yes, an essential thing that we all need. Mm, great. Um, but no, seriously, by the end of this, you're probably going to be throwing your shoes into the Thames. You'll be so convinced by my argument. Don't do that, guys. <laughs> that would be really weird. <laughs> Also, really inconsiderate to all of the animals that live in the river. They don't want any old shoes all up in their gills. It's a joke. Um, uh, also, imagine now when you go and buy your jelly deals. We all buy jelly deals from the river, right? It'll be served in a wet Nike. <laughs> Is that what you want, Radio One? Is that what you want? Jelly deals served in a shoe? Because I will open that pop-up restaurant. <laughs> I'm looking for a new career direction. Of course you don't want that, because shoes are rubbish as food packaging. That's one of the reasons they're overrated. <laughs> also, other reasons that they are overrated. Uh, I asked my boyfriend why he thought that they would be overrated, and he said, never trust anything that has a tongue and no throat. <laughs> and now I am single. <laughs> because that is a fucked up thing to say. I'm just joking. Uh, we broke up before that. <laughs> and now I have to move all of my shoes out of his flat. <laughs> and that is mostly why I chose shoes. Why do I have so many shoes? Oh, God. Ah! Hey, look, if shoes didn't exist, you wouldn't have this stereotype of women being obsessed with shoes, right? And sexism wouldn't exist. <laughs> shoes create sexism. I'm saying if we get rid of shoes, there'll be no sexism. Like, the poster for the Devil Wears Prada would probably be different. <laughs> yeah, radically different. I just imagine the future without shoes. Also, th think about how clean and tidy all the streets would have to be. <laughs> I think they'd have to, like, have a law that if you had a pet, you'd have to follow it around with your hands on its bum hole. <laughs> because you wouldn't be allowed to let it go. And that's going to put off a lot of kids at Christmas, isn't it? <laughs> so if shoes didn't exist, there would be far fewer animals getting thrown in the canal at New Year's. <laughs> Come on, guys. <laughs> no, but seriously, also socks. Like, what? I mean, socks, they do so much of the work, yet get so little of the credit. Like the three other guys in Coldplay. 
like, what's wrong with socks? You know, think about those dweeby people who wear sandals and socks. If there were no shoes, they wouldn't be dweebs. <laughs> and if they weren't dweebs, think about the confidence boost that would give them. They'd probably be inventing cures for cancer or teleporters. Shoes are stopping us from teleporting. <laughs> That's, yes, yes. And also, how am I going to move 60 pairs of shoes? I don't have 60 pairs of, 60 shoe boxes. Who's got 60 shoe boxes? Apart from enthusiasts for Harvest Festival donations. <laughs> I'm going to have to carry them in a bin bag, which will inevitably split over the street and it'll be very humiliating. God, I hate shoes. I'm so lonely. <laughs> 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 Uh, yes, no, I have, I have broken up with my boyfriend and I do need to move all of my shoes. Uh, but I've got lots of socks, as I said, and some of them are really beautiful. And I can fit all of my socks in one medium-sized bag for life. <laughs> but apparently moving out just my socks is not enough. <laughs> That's why I think shoes are overrated. <laughs> Thank you very much, Radio 1. I've been Nadia Kamal. <laughs> For Nadia, everyone. <laughs> I friended a fundamentalist Christian on Facebook. Because I wanted to fight. Now I'm ready to commit murder. <laughs> Thank you for the last time. Now, she called me the Antichrist. And as soon as she said that I wanted to kiss her stupid fucking lemon face because I have a viable method to promote world peace. Woo! Oh, I guess I'm the only one excited about that. All right, all right. Well, check this shison out. Okay? Okay? All right, here's, here's how I know she's right, that I'm the Antichrist. Okay? So, the Antichrist is supposed to come out of the brew. Nobody knows who they are. And they have a viable method to promote world peace, and they're an atheist. Boom! Got all that shice them down. Hey, right, all right, all right. All right, what else? <laughs> what else? My middle and last initials are A and C. Oh, what am I gonna do? Yeah, so I'm the Antichrist there. Yeah, you, you got freaked out. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Now then, why is the other reason I know that I'm the Antichrist? Because I scare every fucking rapist that ever tries to get his hands on me. Damn! Wow. <laughs> Boom! That's right! Because I'm possessed! I'm possessed! Stop trying to save my goddamn soul! It's like I told my Catholic husband. If indeed there is a hell, that is where I'm going. <laughs> Stop trying to save my goddamn soul! <sighs> I told my mother, I deny the existence of the Holy Spirit. It shut her fat trap. <laughs> oh yeah. How come he doesn't work on fundamentalist Christians? Damn it. It's okay. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Don't worry. It's a little emotional. <laughs> me the last year and a half. Oh my god. <laughs> He's laughing at that. <laughs> trying to rape you. <laughs> well, you know what? Every time a guy tries to rape me, I gotta go with a little bit of banter. <laughs> a little bit of banter? I like to screw with them a little bit. Oh yeah. <laughs> god. I think it's funny. You know what else is funnier? When I pull out my crazy eyes, the fuckers run away! <laughs> yeah. Recently, saw some dude beating a puppy! Oh. Uh, I said, don't do that to a puppy! He comes over to me, starts yelling at my face, like, somebody tried to steal my dog! Somebody tried to steal my dog! Comes up in my head, my face, he spits in my face. Whip out my crazy eyes! Boom, there he goes! Like, you get your best back over here and I'm gonna put you into agony! Cause here's what I'm gonna do. Use one finger, I'll paralyze the guy with pain, and then 
I'm gonna have fun talking to him. <laughs> yeah. And then when I'm about to let him go, I'm just like, hey, as soon as I let my finger up, you're gonna be fine. But I'm gonna let you know something. It hurts twice as much on the other side, motherfucker! Oh, right in the dick with the cowboy boots! And I'll leave you on this. More people are convinced that there is a zombie apocalypse imminent than are convinced that world peace is achievable. They're motherfucking retarded, okay? We need world peace now. And I'm the Antichrist, and I'm an idiot. <laughs> Name's Joe Dirt, and I ejaculate fire. Good to know I'm not the only death metal fan in the audience. Or I'm not in the audience right now. Anyway, if you're wondering why I was kind of limping up my way up to the stage, it's because I finally got back into the gym. It's, I've been out of work for a few months. I've been going to UFC gym doing MMA for about three years now. And it's funny, every time I tell somebody that I've been into MMA, they're like, oh, so you're a faggot? What the fuck is that supposed to mean? Oh, well, MMA is just a bunch of fake stuff. It's a bunch of gay sex. Step out in the parking lot so I can rape you. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's kind of strange being one of the few metalheads in Baton Rouge because nobody here listens to metal. They're all obsessed with Leo Boosie. <laughs> Music. He, sounds, he sounds like a kind of intelligent dude, but he fucking dumbass for paying off whoever. But his music sucks, straight up. I listen to my favorite band is a band called Acid Bag. Yes. Yeah. But we're talking. Those of y'all don't know who Acid Bag is. They're a band that never really got famous. <laughs> That's what, that's the true mark of a music fan. If you listen to whatever's new, like Beyonce or, uh, you're not a music fan. You, if this was 1985, you'd be running down the street going, She's my cherry pie! Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go crawl in a hole and die somewhere. <laughs> listen to some fucking real music. Listen to something you're not going to hear every day. But, uh, recently somebody, uh, like, graffitied up, uh, the gravestone of Dimebag Daryl. Uh, give me five minutes alone with them. About <laughs> <laughs> the Pantera fans get that. Uh, it kind of sucks being a metalhead nowadays because when you tell people you're a metalhead, they're like, uh, oh, you listen to Nickelback. <laughs> Yeah! Woo! Woo! I'm about to listen to the sound of you screaming like a bitch when I put my foot up my ass. Your ass is gonna be the fucking couch. My face and your ass. How about that, friend? Huh? I mean, your ass and my face. What's up? Man, Nick, okay, man. Well, listen to some shit. Listen to some fucking arm and a mar. That's my shit. Yeah. Uh, I recently saw this uh, band you might have heard of called Black Label Society. <laughs> Black Label Society. Yeah. Greatest guitarist alive, Zach Wilde. Started off as the only metalhead guitarist for this band called Leonard Skinhead. He played for a Leonard Skinhead tribute band. What took a bunch of stupid rednecks to play two chords at a time, he does it all by himself. <laughs> Fucking Yankees. Fuck, I lost myself.
Here he comes. One more time for John Moore, everybody. What is up? I'm actually just looking for the bathroom. Could you guys point me? I really was going to go to the bathroom, and I'm glad I did not. So I'm here uh, with some friends from Dallas. I'm uh, going to talk about my buddy that I was in the Army with. This guy is a legend. You guys may have heard of him. I'm not going to use his name, but he does a, he's got a foundation with Gary Sinise. He uh, has earned a lot of money. Great guy and hysterical guy. Only reason I bring him up, one of the funniest guys I've ever met, right? This guy, uh, when we were in service, huge, 6'7", 260, stepped on an IED and lost all four of his limbs. Yeah, I do not tell jokes about this guy for obvious fucking reasons. I had one serious question about his dick. Uh, he got his wife pregnant, so I, that question has been answered. Um, and, and, and truth be told, like I said, he's very funny. He, he's got a ton of stage time, more stage time than all of me and the other comics put together. But at least we're all put together. You know what I'm saying? Jesus fucking Christ, John. What the fuck? My God, you just came up and told a story about your funnier friend? Why didn't you let him sign up? We would have loved to have a fucking funny guy with no limbs up here while you're up here telling these sad stories. You're right, I'm sorry. How many of you think it should have been him that gotten blown up in the army, huh? Yeah. How about that, John? How about that? Uh, yeah. I deserve that. <laughs> you knew you had one yeah. minute. I, I, I did not. I did not. Ex yeah, that's true. How long have you not <laughs> been doing comedy, John? <laughs> 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 a long time. So you drove in a car from Dallas with a bunch of comedians like, I man, did. we're going to do a minute if we get pulled. I hope we get pulled. And you're like, ah. Yes. <laughs> really? Yes. Uh, Bobby was driving, in my defense. He is a terrible driver. The, the guy that was just on here? Yes. Just making sure it's not the Tourette's guy. Uh, <laughs> I would believe you. Um, so here we are. You were really in the army? Yeah. Wow, I don't really get army vibes from you. Yeah. You seem more like an old navy guy to me. Or something. Uh, <laughs> Eagle Scout. Yeah. What were you? What were you doing in the army? Uh, I was a paratrooper in the 82nd. I was an artillery guy. Wow. Where'd you serve at? Uh, I was stationed at Fort Bragg. Actually, my buddy's here. Uh, also, 82nd guy in a comic, and I went to Afghanistan in 07, 08. Oh, okay. Yeah. Very good. Hey, Roger. Absolutely. Hell yeah, paratrooper, huh? Yes. So you would just get dropped off in Afghanistan? No, there actually has not been a combat jump for many, many years. The last official combat jump was in, um, shit, I want to say it was when they jumped into Nicaragua or something like that. But there's not really any combat jumps anymore. The idea is that the threat of people being able to, because it's like an 18-hour mandate, you got to be able to deploy in 18 hours. So. Okay. Wow. That was, that was a long way to nowhere. <laughs> so, John, you've been back for a while. What do you do for work now? Uh, I'm in graduate school, and I'm using some funding that I have available to me through the VA. Okay, awesome. And what are you going to school for? Uh, I'm getting an MBA and a data analytics. All right. Yeah. Hell yeah. And okay. I just started doing comedy. I am very new. How new? And this is awesome. Great to be at Three months. And what, what else have you joked about when you're three <laughs> months on stage, when you're not talking about a guy getting blown up for his country? But he's really funny. He's the funny, quote, funniest guy I have written down here. The funniest guy. You see that? Funniest guy. Had to write it down because I couldn't believe it. You were 40 seconds into a set with no laughs, and you're talking about the funniest guy you know. I know. Shit. <laughs> I thought I was going to get a laugh with the bathroom bit, maybe. I don't know. That really? Was, you ah, thought? Like, that was what? a bit? Yeah. I thought you were genuinely asking. Uh, well, I, Honestly, I in mean, retrospect, I wish I would have shown you. It's right over there to the left. Okay, thank you very much. Instead, you decided to take a shit right here on stage. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Ow. What else have you joked about? Tell us. Give us a. Give us a. Um, give I did a, a joke. What's your shortest joke that you have? Uh, I did a joke about how silly QAnon is, and like, I'm not surprised that people believe this shit because they've been lying to us about everything. For years. You guys remember Pluto? The yeah. Oh. It's almost incredible how bad you are at this. <laughs> like, I mean, honestly, I've seen people do 
some horrible shit, but there's always like one or two people in the audience that like maybe need attention or something or like want to show they have a different sense of humor and they'll laugh. The amount of silence that it's echoes, definitely. like I can hear the Westin Hotel, I know. like people ringing the bellboy uh, fucking <laughs> bell across the street. You know what's street. confusing? You're a good talker. Yeah. yeah. Like how do you not know that you're not funny? Inexperience. Yeah, three months in is but, yeah, that's very. Uh, but you know, are are you funny like in conversation with your friends and just trying to figure out how to do stand up? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Maybe. Like, what's know. the time that you made your like? Did you make your friends laugh on the drive here from I Dallas? Did. What'd you do? We were talking about Bobby's driving, and my buddy said, "Did your parents yell at you a lot, like as a kid?" And I said, "Obviously not." Did you hear that? Did you hear that right before everyone this was laughing about baffling. the silence? Oh, this is so baffling. It's actually incredible. I, I'm going to have you do another joke because I'm okay. shocked right. at how quiet the room can be. Again, <laughs> when, normally when people do bad here, there's some noise. Like you can hear something. But yeah. right after you go, hit a punchline. It's like I you're know. missing an ingredient and the <laughs> bread won't rise. <laughs> like, like yeast and water. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> what's wrong here? <laughs> this flower ain't doing shit. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's wilting. Flower on a tray. Okay, do another joke. How many want to hear another joke yes. from John Moore? Oh, thank you so much. This guy's so bad, it's actually amazing. Okay, it's incredible. This joke. is historical. It is great to be here right now. This is so much... This is uh, actually this is really fun. Um, fuck guys, I don't know. A Come joke? On, just a joke. You got it. You got. It. Don't 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 do any sound I effects. Had, I want to uh, see if we can tap back into this. Uh, I had an STD scare recently. I got one. Yeah, not a scary one though. It's uh, curable. Like this is a curable joke. So one pill, the joke is gone. But I should have known better. Because I didn't use a condom, which is stupid. But also, I once had a girl tell me that I have the biggest dick hole she's ever seen. That can't be good, can it? Just leaving the front door open like that? Come on in! <laughs> <laughs> there was a parakeet that laughed at that. A jungle bird of some kind. Um, very interesting. Have you ever thought of doing everything differently? Yes. <laughs> Have you ever thought of like completely starting from scratch? Yeah. Like just tearing the paper off the wall? Yeah, I do it every, honestly, I do it every, I, 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 I've only been doing this three months. I've yeah. told a lot of jokes maybe three or four times. Those jokes I've probably told four or five times. Do you have right. a big dick hole? That's what I've been told. Yeah, what are we talking about That's here? That's what like, I've been what, the hole, the, where the pee comes out. Right, yeah, but yeah, like, like, how big yeah, can it be? Right. Like, like is, a it, is it from like the top? To, like, I mean, how does it work exactly? Well, you like a, a mouth of a Gatorade bottle, you know? Like, no way, you don't have that. No, it's not that. no, what's it like? What's it really like? Well, Describe I mean, it, it looks like us. a urethra. I guess it's just maybe like you know, number what? two pencil, number three, number four. Ooh, uh, is it a sharpie marker, perhaps a uh, perhaps a no, uh, definitely not a marker. Perhaps the tip of a pool stick or. Definitely not. Number two pencil, maybe if it was sharp. Whoa. But I wouldn't, I mean, okay, so in the army, they say that when you get an STD test, it's called uh, getting rotted off the range. Have you heard this before? No. So when you go to the range. No, we've never heard of anything that you've talked about tonight before. <laughs> when, you, when you go to the range in basic training, it's a bunch of guys who don't know what they're doing. And so, like, you got, they got to make sure. Go ahead, go ahead. You got to make sure there's no bullets in the gun. So when you come off the range, you lock your bolt to the rear, and then you see the range master, and he sticks a bolt down the end of your rifle, and he, like, taps the firing mechanism. So they say when you get an STD test that you got to go get rotted off the range because they stick the thing. <laughs> Red band, it's so stupid. A jungle bird again keeps appearing during your set for some reason. Thank God, it's better than the silence. Wow. So what else about you? What would we be interested to know? Before we let you go, John, give us one interesting fun fact about the life of John um, Moore. When I was 11 years old, I saved my best friend's life. How'd you do that? Uh, the day after I turned 11, we, I lived, grew up in Colorado. He was in a cave-in. There was like a cave that you know some kids had dug in the side of a ravine, mm -hmm. maybe like six feet deep or whatever. And we would go and we would like dig this cave because we didn't know any better and it just fucking collapsed on my buddy one day and uh it was actually three of us my my really good friend to this day he's got three kids um was buried like under five feet of dirt my other friend was buried up to his waist i ran and i got help two adults came they dug my friend out i went to a house i called 911. i went and got his mom she fucking chased me all the way there on my bike that's yeah. awesome. It's Where the fuck were you when your funnier friend stepped on that IED? I was yeah. not in the army. I was not in the army anymore. Uh, it's a shame you yeah. can't dig yourself out of the hole you put yourself in uh, doing jokes. Incredible. Uh, 
Unbelievable. But I'll tell you, John, as far as, as far as, you know, a lot of people come on this show and they struggle and they're new and it happens. But I'm telling you, there's something so magical about the way that you do it. You know what? Thank you. I, I know that you, that's an insult, but I still appreciate it. No, no. I, 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 you, do, you are like, you seem likable. So yeah, thank you. there's that. that yeah. Is, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm serious. I, I appreciate it. Yeah. Good. Genuinely. This is fun. Hell thank yeah. You, there he goes, John Moore, everybody. Come on, give it up for John. Thanks, John. Thanks, yeah. This shit made me so sad. That was unusual. It was. That was like a... I don't know what that was like. It's a special kind of silence that happened. You know what's... He seems smart. Yeah. Yeah. That's why it's weird. Yeah, it's... It's baffling. All that. Hopefully he doesn't try to paratroop off a bridge tonight, you know what I mean, after that? <laughs> All right.